Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new build video to share with you today, and it is a brand new Tamiya kit on top of it, so you know how well those go together. Today we are building up the Tamiya 135th scale M18 Hellcat, and it is a beaut. Really cool kit, goes together beautifully. This video is going to be a little bit different than some of the other build videos that I've done in the past. This one is going to be more emphasis on the actual build portion of it and how the kit goes together. So when you're seeing individual steps, you're going to see the instructions in the corner of the video to let you know how it goes together, what we did for it, things like that. Just to make it a little bit easier when you actually do get your kit that uh, you'll have an idea how it actually goes together. Now this kit is due out in December. Uh, mid to late December, I should say, of 2021, if you're watching this video in the future. But it's a great kit and would highly recommend it. And we're going to show you how it all goes together right now. So, let's get started. Okay, we are ready to assemble the lower hull on here. And to start off with, we have our floor. And I've gone ahead and just glued this one little part into place here. And then the next step up, we need to attach it to the base here. Or actually, the, I should say the bottom of the hull. And we put a little bit of liquid cement on those. And then just a matter of lining the pins with the rods up. Actually, that was pretty... Do we get it in? Yep, yeah, just like that. So that's kind of kind of snaps into place. With that being done, there's also two other little holes here that we need to put a little cement on. And then we can drop the basically, I guess this would be the firewall between the engine and the fighting compartment. And that'll get glued into place just like that. Now we have our our side pieces here, and they will quickly go. Let's see, I think it goes like this one right here. It'll line right up with the little pin on each one of them, and that should just kind of click together. We'll obviously glue that on and then do the other side as well. And I'm going to do these off camera because I want to make sure we get glue all the way around just like we're supposed to. Then we have a whole bunch of these little parts, the little um, parts of the suspension. Then I'll show you how those go on as soon as I get the sides on here. Okay, here is the sides put on, and I've gone ahead on this side and have completed the bottom, but I'm going to show you um, how it actually goes on showing the other side. So it's kind of a very unusual way they've done this. You can see how there's this big opening with those little pieces slid on there. It's just a matter of taking these pieces like that, and you pop them right in the shape right there. Uh, very, very cool the way that gets glued in there, and then creates part of your shaft for your uh, suspension arm to come out of and then on top of that and I'll show how each one of these I'll just glue them on off camera but we are going to show how the other piece you need to put on also gets attached and that would be these little springs here just like that and there's five of those springs that need to get put on both sides as well and with that being done the only other thing we need to do in this step is glue on the rear of this vehicle Let's see if I've got that on correct nope got it backwards it actually goes like this yeah see how it just clicks in there we'll put some glue on that so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up all those on and then we can move on to the rest of the suspension now we are going to attach the uh, very crazy suspension on this kit and what I'm going to recommend is that you only cut the parts out as you need them because they're very specific for each one of these things and you don't want to glue them in the wrong spot or the wrong side and you can see like this first piece has all of these extra little attachment points and then to me I want you to glue this second arm on making sure it is glued in the right position. Now, I've already test fitted all this stuff so I know how it's going on uh, but I have to admit the first time I, I messed with it it was like whoa how does all this go together and then finally this last suspension arm for this step because now there's a couple other ones we have to put on as well gets glued into place. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to show you the other two going on. the 
last one that they came out with, and they actually used the actual jet from Texas. Now with the suspension installed on both sides, we can go ahead and put the road wheels in place. And the road wheels are just uh, front and back, just as you see right here. At least the first four from the front back here, which I will go ahead and put those on, show you. They can just be slid right into place with a little bit of cement, just like that. And then keeping an eye on it, there is a different road wheel for the rear portion of it. And it's got a special slot on here, and I'll show you what that turns out to be is this little slot on the bottom and I'm sure this is for the tracks to get the tracks to line up properly nope, we uh, didn't get that one on there straight get that one straightened on there so we with that one right there you want to make sure you use the correct one so the slot lines up on it and of course I've gone ahead and put the return rollers up on top and they too were very simple just to front and back with a little cement in place as you can see I have one whole side of the suspension and wheels and drive sprocket as well as idler attached on here I just cut these piece off here they need to be trimmed up a little bit so there's a little burr on the top of one of the uh, the teeth as well as the only thing that's and I don't want to call it difficult it's just kind of a pain there are three little injection marks that you need to get inside so you need a real fine sanding stick to get inside there to sand those off there is a poly cap that I just placed inside here for the uh, the dry sprocket not on the either just on the dry sprocket only because I guess the way the tracks are going to get applied or this needs to turn a little bit and the uh, the dry sprocket does not so I'm going to go ahead and finish up those two pieces right there you'll get to see the uh, the instructions real fast on those and then we can start working on the tracks okay right now you are looking at the instructions on how the track will go together for this and if you'll notice next to each one of the parts there is a number with a circle around it and that is the order of steps that you need to put the actual track into place now taking a look at the actual vehicle you can see that I've gone ahead and built up the left side of the track went together pretty easily and now I'm going to show you how the right side will go on always making sure that we have the track going in the right direction uh, the first part we'll notice is the little pins that we showed you earlier there are two little notches here that is going to lock right into there and then we can go ahead and glue that one into place then there'll be another individual track that'll get glued in just like that to come up that curve there'll be another long length of track just like this that will get glued up to this point here and then it'll kind of like fall into the track and you can actually just go ahead and start gluing like that I'm just kind of quickly showing you uh, how these steps will be then it'll come to the portion where we need to actually glue the individual links together and I will zoom in a little bit here for you and just show you that the links go together pretty pretty easily just a matter of taking them like this and putting them together and there'll be two sections of six and then just a touch of cement in between each one of the tracks there then you're going to want to let those tracks set up for about four or five minutes and we'll zoom back out again now and I've got this section of track right here that I started to assemble well just just before we went on camera here and you can see that the track are still flexible so when we get up to this portion making sure we get in the right direction we can glue those in and we can wrap it right around making sure they connect right around the drive sprocket just like that and then we'll let that set in then we glue the top piece on and do the exact same thing on the back and in a matter of maybe 15 20 minutes you can get a whole side of track cut out put on ready to go so I'm gonna now that I've shown you how it's gone together I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up off camera and we'll come back and we can start working on the upper hull okay now you're looking at the instructions for the next three steps which we are going to start working on the sponsons and here we have our shells and it's just a matter of putting a couple of pieces together like this actually lining up that little hole just like that and then we can go ahead and glue that into place on the bottom of the sponson here 
And we can also need to attach the front fender as well, just like this. And I've already got one side built up here, so while the other side is drying, I can kind of just show you how this is going to work. This will just kind of lock right into place here, very simply, just like that. And we'll go ahead and glue, and actually fits really well. I mean, that's a tight, strong fit in there. So we'll go ahead and glue both sides of the sponson on, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we've got the sponsons on all assembled and ready to go. So now we can go ahead and attach the rear portion of here, just like this. And then with a little bit of cement here and a touch here, we can go ahead and install this grate that goes right here on the back. And then there's also a grate that goes right here, drops right into place. And then I'm going to show you how this mates up. So you need to take this piece here, kind of fit it in just like this. Make sure the two line up. Okay, and then once we get the top and bottom together, I'm going to put a touch of cement here, right down that seam and then this piece here is the piece that mates the two of them together just like that and there we are there is our lower hull all put together ready to go uh, obviously we have to put on doors hat you know hatches all the little tiny accessory pieces on there which I'm gonna do right now off of camera and I will get all that done. And then the next step up will be to start assembling the turret. And here is the lower hull with all of the, uh, the light guards and hatches. One of the tools, I normally don't put the tools on, but uh, that one is actually painted the actual olive drab color. So I went ahead and, and glued it in. And also you'll notice that I went over the entire model with a single coat of Tamiya's XF62 olive drab. And that was just because after you, once you get all the sanding done, the plastic looks a little bit kind of weird looking after you know you sand it because it kind of gets a white film. And I think the green, or excuse me, the olive drab paint will show up a lot better. Now with that done, we can start working on the turret. Here we are, here are the parts for the turret. Now I've gone ahead and assembled a little bit of some of the accessories that go inside the turret ring here, like a little bit of a motor uh, and these bins. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and attach the first side of the, the turret. It's got a nice, strong, tight fit, just like that side there. And then once that, we get the glue on that, we can go ahead and glue the other side on here as well. And there's like a little lip inside here that kind of locks it all together, as well as that little bump on the back. Don't want to sand that off. That is actually part of the uh, attaching point for the other side of the turret. So I will go ahead and get these two portions of it glued into place. Now with both sides glued on, you can put the top of the turret basket into place. And then I've glued the two halves of this ring together and it too will get glued into place just right in through here. And with the turret ring glued into place, we can start working on this front hatch part. We first need to attach this ammo uh, canisters here on this rack. Now it does have, when you look at the instructions, a area to put a bunch of shells in here too, but because they're gonna be very visible and they need to be painted a different color, we're gonna leave those out for right now and then attach those later on. So we're gonna let this portion dry now. Now I've gone ahead and assembled most of the gun breech here and you'll notice too that it's at a unusual angle. Hopefully you can see that it's not perfectly straight like you'd expect it to be and it is going to glue into the front here and get glued in just like that. And then once that gets glued into place and fully dries we can go ahead and mount it into place on the very front of the turret ring. 
And it's got a nice little lip right there that it'll mate up to. But we want to make sure that this is fully dry first. So what I'll do is let's get this uh, drying for a few minutes, and then I'll go ahead and attach this on here and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I actually misspoke a little bit. I said before we put the uh, the breech into place, that or actually that we were going to put the breech into place, but before we do that, we need to attach that little little thing with the ammo bins in it. As you see right there, this has the little portion of the top of the turret that we need to line up and get it all nice and square and even and let that fully dry. And then once that is into place, it'll have the connection point for the top of the breech that once it goes in like this, we have a portion to glue it on. So it'll lock right in there with the glue. So I'm going to let this top portion dry for a few more minutes, then I'll go ahead and glue the, the breech in like I was talking about earlier. And while the turret is drying, we can go ahead and build the canvas bag that will surround the mantlet as well as the gun barrel. And I already have a little cement on here right now. It looks like it's a, it's a very unusual shape, but it seems to fit pretty well. Might have to let this dry portion up here, and then we can put some pressure on here down the bottom to make sure it stays together. And then the other side will get glued in just like this. Very interesting way that they uh, molded this up, but you can see just even dry fitting fits pretty well. With that, we also get a slide molded barrel that will slide right down the, the pipe right here. So we'll go ahead and finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like and how it will mount onto the front of the mantlet. Now we can go ahead and build, technically it's not a turret basket, but it kind of is. It's the part that's hanging down from the actual turret that will rotate with the rest. This is one piece all molded by Tamiya. Pretty kind of cool looking here. We do have to put this seat into place. And I was trying to dry fit this for a little while before I shot this on. Very difficult, only because of the way my hands are, trying to get it on here and film. So you got to come at it from this angle to see how it gets glued into place. But uh, not impossible. I just I was like, wow, I'm fumbling a lot with this. But it'll get glued in just like this. Which, speaking of that, since we've got it in there, let's put a little bit of cement on there now and hold that in. First time I did it, it took me like like six or seven tries. Just now, it goes in right the way it's supposed to. So that was kind of lucky. Then we've got all of these other parts right here that need to get glued into the tur turret basket. I'm showing you the instructions so you can see that it's not very difficult at all. Once we get that done, we will go ahead and mount it to the bottom of the actual turret. And then there is a whole bunch of other little pieces like these bars that go across here and some of the other bars, which I will glue all of those on as well off camera because you see how they actually go into place. And once again, dry fitting all of that stuff earlier, everything fit really, really well. So let me go ahead and get all these pieces on and uh, I will show you what it looks like. Here we are. Here is our pretty much completed model we'll call it. I'm going to give you guys a little 360. Couple things I want to point out to you as we go around here. First of all, I have not permanently attached the uh, the gun and any of this canvas tarp right here. That's why you're going to see a gap going all the way around there. I just put it in place right now to show you guys, but it's going to be much easier to paint all that stuff separately because we want to paint all that canvas a lighter color. Also, as we come around to the back here, yeah, I'll actually help it around a little bit. There is a seam back here on the back that I started to sand, but actually there is a set of tracks that is going to cover all of that up. So we don't need to worry about that anymore. I just went and left it over. Now I'm going to stop the turntable for a minute here to uh, show you guys something. I've put all of these little, uh, little baskets on the side here, but did not glue the very, very front here, this little piece here. And that is because we need to be able to pull it away to get the decal around it. In the instructions, they show you putting decals on in the middle of the build, which I understand what they're trying to say, but that it's impossible to do that. You need to paint and wet and you know paint and decal all that stuff after the things all put together. So we just left that little portion done and we can pull it away and actually slide the decal in. So now I've gone ahead and painted the entire thing just with Tamiya's olive drab, just because like I said, it looks better on camera while we're about to do this. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually just seal this paint job with some TS-80 uh, lacquer clear coat. And then we are gonna go ahead and put the decals on. And you can see we get a decently large set of decals. I am gonna go ahead and do the one with the white 
three point or three dash one and that little uh, little cat symbol right on this one here. I like the way that one looks up against the green. So let's go ahead and seal that and then I'll show you how the decals go on. One other thing too before we start that, um, the clear parts that come inside here because we need these two little lenses on. I was racking my brain for a few minutes there because I'm looking at the clear parts and I see all these clear vision ports on here. And I'm like, where the heck or what did I screw up that I don't see the clear vision ports? And then I realized this is a standard piece of clear parts off of their Sherman kit. So they're using the same headlights, but you don't use the vision ports at all. So if, if you get to that point and you're looking around go, did I miss something? No, it's just it's off of another kit. Next up, I am going to put some fading marts on top of the canvas. Get all this off here. And we're going to use the, uh, the new Dio dry brush paint from Ammo by MIG. Here we're using a light olive drab and a big fat brush. Just going to dip a little bit into it and then blot it quite a bit on a paper napkin. And then lightly start to go over all the creases and make them all pop right out here. And you can hopefully see how it starts to make make it look like canvas that's been out in the sun for a little bit. It doesn't have to be too long, but how it starts to fade at all of the uh, the folds. Okay, while the shroud on the uh, for the barrel is drying right now, I am going ahead and putting all of the decals into place. And I should also point out too, I didn't show it on camera, but we already had the entire vehicle painted the correct olive drab. But what I did also over here is I went back with my airbrush, just painted all of the track as well as the road wheels the rubber part of the road wheels with uh, a NATO black to give it kind of a rubber look to it there and not a heck of a lot needed to be done we'll do some more detail painting inside of the uh, the fighting compartment later on but talking about the decals right now as you can see as I'll give you a quick little 360 there's a lot of decals on this particular uh, vehicle lots of markings on it here and they've all fit really well it was a good idea. I'm glad I definitely did leave that piece separate because that other decal slid right into place. And I'm just going to give you a quick little rundown of how we're applying the decals. Taking a little bit of Mark Fit Strong. That is the one I prefer. And having our decals soak in water for a little bit. We just come down here, slide it into place. Adjust it as we see fit to make sure it fits properly. Right on like that. And then it's just a matter of giving it another coat. Let that dry, soak in, and go around any nooks and crannies that we need. Now up on top here, there and these the other star on the back, actually I should rotate it a little bit. They require a little bit more. In fact, I'm putting multiple coats of the Mark Fit Strong on there to get them to wrap around some of these little uh, uh, what do you call it? Hinges here. There's hinges on top and bottom. Once those hinges and the decal, or excuse me, once the decal fully dries, we are going to go back and paint the actual hinge itself white. That's how it's called out in the instructions there. So uh, we've got a couple more decals, including the big one right here on the edge. You can see that we haven't attached that bar yet, but we will do that right after I get the last of the decals on. And now that all the decals are on, I've gone ahead and sprayed the entire model with uh, Dull Coat to seal those in. And we are just going to use some of the Ammo by MIG dry brushers. This is the medium olive green. And we're just going to use it a little bit with a big thick brush like this to do some of the highlights. Very similar to the way we did the uh, shroud around the barrel. And it'll highlight and pick up all of the little nuts and bolt heads. Plus also you can see I've started to do it on the top here just lightly. And it just highlights everything. We aren't going to do any major weathering on this particular kit because this was all about the actual build of it, but we do want to see all the detail that provides. And then once that is all dry, we are going to go back over it with our Tamiya panel liner, in this case black, and we want to just take it inside here, just touching it and bringing it around and highlighting, like a sh we're actually not highlighting, putting a shadow around all of the bolts. 
things like that in there. So I'll go ahead and finish up all of that and then all we have to do is work on the machine gun to put up on top and we are ready for the final reveal. And here is our completed model. I went over it just like I said uh, with the uh, the ammo by MIG dry brushers. Uh, really like those. I was I don't know why. I, I kind of held off using them for a little while. Just thought, ah, I can dry brush with anything else. But I really like the consistency of those paints. And they work very, very well and are easy to use, which I absolutely love. And such a wide variety of colors. I'm very happy I chose to use those. And you can put them on very, very subtly, too. Very nice. And then, of course, we went over it with the panel liner from Tamiya, the black panel liner. Nothing heavy. I didn't want to do too much weathering on this. We wanted to just basically show off what this kit looks like and how it goes together on the build one. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn the turntable on to give you guys a little 360 view of the entire build. Uh, to me, it really knocked it out of the park on this one. This is a gorgeous kit. The, the build quality is incredible. Very, very nice fit, finish, everything about it. Can't say enough about it. And it's a cool looking vehicle. It really goes together well. You also notice too on the tools, I don't normally paint the tools the olive drab, but everything I was seeing online, the tools had an olive drab paint job on them. So rather than paint the wooden handles, I thought I would just go ahead and do the what the pictures online show it. So and the few black and white photos I saw, it was kind of hard to tell. So we went ahead with that. And then of course you can see we have up on top there, we finished off our 50 cal and put the little decal on the ammo box, painted up the ammunition. And it is a beautiful thing. So this kit is due to come out very soon in December 2021. And uh, beautiful. Definitely recommend. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. And please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.